everyone, I'm Gina, and today we're going to be going over how to calculate the charge to uncharged ratio, or vice versa, of an amino acid. So each of these problems can be very situational. She could ask for the uncharged to charge ratio, she could change the pH, she could change the amino acid. So it's best to just follow a set of steps and apply it for each problem rather than generalize. So the first step you want to do is draw the amino acid side chain or R group or residue, they all mean the same thing, in the protonated and deprotonated form. You are required to know the ionizable side chains through the acronym DRY HEC. Those are the one letter abbreviations of the amino acids and you need to know where on the structure it is able to be ionized or lose a proton or gain a proton. So in histidine's case, it is this nitrogen right here. Okay, so now that I've drawn my structures, my next step is to identify which one is charged and which one is uncharged. The one that has a positive or a negative charge is going to be the charged one, so in this case on the left, and the one that doesn't have the positive or minus charge is uncharged, so the one on the right. The next step is to decide which one is in the acid form and which one is in the base form. The definition of a bronsted lowry acid is that it is a donor, so this acid must have a proton so that it can donate it. So in this case, the left structure is going to be the acid form. The definition of a bronsted lowry base is that it accepts protons. So the structure on the right is going to be in the base form because it doesn't have that proton and it is able to accept one at that nitrogen. So now we've identified which is charged, which is uncharged, which is acid, which one's base, which is the hardest part of the problem. The rest is just plugging and chugging in the Henderson-Hasselbalch formula. I'm just gonna plug in what I know, subtract six over, get that and then I take the log of both sides. So I get 10 to the 3 as the base to acid ratio and I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that. Now that I've already realized that the uncharged form is the base form and the charged form is the acid form in this case, I can match it to the ratio. So that means my base will be uncharged and my acid will be charged. So now I have my preliminary ratio and I go back and look at what the question is asking for. Now I have uncharged to charge ratio, but the question is asking for charge to uncharged. So I simply just flip the ratio. And now this ratio is my answer. So let's go ahead and take a look at another example. This question is asking for the charge to uncharged ratio like the last one, but now of cysteine. So again, the first step is to write out the deprotonated and protonated form of the amino acid side chain, R group, residue. Again, they all mean the same thing. So this is cysteine, its side chain, and the protonated and deprotonated form. So I know that the structure on the right is going to be the charged one because it has a positive or negative charge. And I know my structure on the left is going to be uncharged because it doesn't have a positive or negative charge. Next, I wanna see which is the acid and which is the base. Because the structure on the left has the proton, that is going to be the acid. Because the structure on the right is missing the proton and it is able to accept one, that is going to be the base. This is the perfect example as to why you should just take each of these problems step by step and not generalize, because in this problem, our base is charged. However, in the last problem, our base was uncharged. Moving on, the next step is to calculate our base to acid ratio using the Henderson-Hasselbalch formula. So I get 13.3 is equal to 8.3 plus the log base over acid. I subtract from both sides. And now I take the log of both sides. And my base acid ratio is equal to 10 to the 5, but I'm going to go ahead and rewrite it. So my base acid ratio is 10 to the 5 to 1. And now I just assign the uncharged and charged that I already figured out earlier. So in this case, my ratio is charged to uncharged because the base we decided was charged already and the acid was uncharged. So now I'll take a look at this ratio and see if it matches the ratio that the problem asked for, and it does in this case. So we don't flip it, we leave it alone, and this is our answer. So the final problem I'm gonna leave you with is calculating the uncharged to charge ratio of tyrosine in a pH of 11.9. Feel free to work this problem out on your own, and if you wanna check your answers, you can go ahead and shoot me an email with a screenshot of your work. I hope this video helped, and thanks for watching.